Hello, hello. Hi, welcome to Pure Flow's Expert Hour, where today we are looking forward to having a really nice conversation with um, Katie Bradbury. Um, and Katie is a registered nurse and nutritional therapist. So let's see if we can add her in. Great to see um, lots of people joining us already. So good morning. Don't forget to just comment just to let me know that you're here. Hi, everybody joining us. Good morning. <laughs> Let's just see if Katie is ready to join us. So I'm Meg um, and I am on Team Pure Flow. Um, good morning, Mamaze. Nice to see you here. Um, so Katie will hopefully be joining us in a moment um, for her first expert Q&A. Good morning, Katie. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Nice to see you. Yeah, lovely to see you too. Um, so I was just saying, we've got quite a few people joining us already, so it's great to see them all here with us. Lovely. Um, Hi, everyone. A few questions and things already submitted, so we can go through that. And then sort of um, I'll keep an eye on the comments and questions that are coming through, and I could already um, back into here. Somebody's testing our travel wrap for made for mums and we're really pleased that you love it we love it too I've got one actually for my little boy so um I'll just do a little bit of an intro to Katie so thanks again for joining us so Katie is a registered nurse and a nutritional therapist um and her mission is to have healthy mums and healthy babies um she also comes from being a family nurse and also a health visitor and also you're a mum aren't you as well Katie Yes, uh, mum of two. <laughs> and how old are your kids? Uh, so I've got Ida, who is uh, two and a half, and I've got Rose, who is seven months. Perfect. Oh, cool. So <laughs> I'll kind of leave it to you. You can do a little bit more of an intro to yourself, and then um, we'll go for questions. We'll sort of make our way through questions um, after that. Yeah. Cool. Lovely. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, so so as Meg said, uh, sorry, my phone keeps on going slightly dark. So if I like lean forward, I'm just tapping <laughs> the screen so it doesn't uh, cut out. Um, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm Katie, as Meg said, I'm a uh, nutritional therapist and, uh, and also a family nurse. And I've got a background as a health visitor as well. Um, and I, yeah, I just, I, I, in all kind of reaches of my work, I support mums and babies. So I support women to get pregnant, uh, also during pregnancy and in the, the critical postnatal period as well. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely my forte. And, and Meg was... Um, uh, kind enough to submit some questions to me in advance of things um, that had come up uh, for for your audience there and, and also uh, just for things that would be quite interesting to hear about. So we thought that we'd shape the session today around those questions. Okay. Um, so thinking about um, pregnancy and the postnatal period really. So oh. um I'll I'll just... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, do, do you want to ask me the questions or should yeah, I just I'll through... go them and then um, we can take it from there. So um, one of the questions that we've got was, are there any foods I should be eating regularly during pregnancy? Yes. So, yeah, I mean, again, there's no, there's no specific foods that like is a magic food for pregnancy. Um, <laughs> and I think it's just around thinking like like with most situations really but particularly in pregnancy because you're growing another little person which kind of takes quite a lot of reserves for you is to think about just what a balanced diet looks like uh, yeah. so if you're focusing on your kind of your three main macronutrients which are your carbohydrates your proteins and your fats uh, each of those has a different but really critical role to play not just in growing a developing baby but also in keeping you feeling well and healthy during pregnancy because yeah. uh, we know that you know pregnancy can really take it out of you and make your energy levels plummet and you know all of these things and we don't want that we want you to be to be feeling good as well so um so you know thinking about your carbohydrates uh, and and your kind of your slow release carbohydrates are going to be the ones that can really help sustain you through the day and equally they 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 help to kind of with that growth of baby as well so yeah. um so so the slow release carbs are really important and in that i'm thinking about kind of whole grains as opposed to uh, kind of white rice or white bread or these kind of okay. things yeah. um and then um protein is your second macronutrient 
nutrients. So protein really is the, the building block. Uh, so thinking about your growing baby, uh, thinking about, you know, in, in the early stages of pregnancy, you're like growing a placenta from scratch. Um, so, you know, your, your protein requirements are pretty high. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when you're thinking about, and, and especially in your third trimester as well, when you started to get a little bit bigger, you might be thinking about making up your some of your excess calories with protein because that's that's really the building block and how many um, calories extra should you be eating in your third trimester because i mean um, there's all that oh i'm eating for two now as you reach for the biscuit tin sort of thing you know but i know that's yeah. not strictly the case no no it's not and the, the the eating for two thing is is a myth um it's you know definitely you know you might find in pregnancy uh you might have an increased appetite and that's that's fine um the, you might find that you've got an increased appetite for like as you say like sugary sweet things and you know that that is uh, very common but if you can resist that and and just be thinking about okay how can i how can i make up that or or fill up and bulk out with things like fruits and vegetables and those kind of things instead that's yeah. a great idea in terms of calories i don't really like to put a set um of calories on it's it's around in third trimester towards the very end it's maybe three to five hundred calories and that can continue if you're breastfeeding um but it does vary from individual to individual so i don't like to put a set number on that because i think yeah. people can become a bit fixated on the on the calories um so 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 that's that and then uh, just going back to your three macronutrients then the third and very important one that's often overlooked is fat um so fat is is an essential nutrient and it's something that i think we're often quite scared of um but you know good good fats as opposed to bad fats um are are just essential for a growing baby for their brain for their nervous system uh, so good fats would would be in things like nuts and seeds and avocados and oily fish um mm -hmm. uh, and and those kind of things so so and olive oil in particular extra virgin olive oil is a really great source of um of of, of healthy fat so uh, if you if you kind of come back to basics in pregnancy and, and look at those three macronutrients and then also think about as i've mentioned just a, a big range of fruit and veg if you can think about including all different colors in your diet across the day or across the week um, then that's a really great idea uh, and lots of water and also just thinking as well in, in third trimester in particular around iron because uh, some some ladies in pregnancy their iron can start to dip a little bit in the third trimester that's quite normal but you know just perhaps thinking about ways that you can boost your iron intake a little bit in the third trimester Semester, um through red meat if you eat it or kind of dark green leafy veg and again some of your nuts and seeds quinoa and stuff like that can contain some iron as well oh okay well i've just had a question pop up on the screens um yeah. from crowd control to major mum um she's just had her seventh baby congratulations wow congrats and, um she's saying each has been a high risk pregnancy with oh. most i've had gestational diabetes but have had one or two where i've not yet my baby's weight always spirals is there anything i can do to help prevent this in the future i guess from a nutritional point of view gestational diabetes yeah, so I, I don't know, when you say your baby's weight always spirals, do you mean during pregnancy, as in like baby starts to get a bit big during pregnancy? Yeah, I'm not sure. I um, don't know if crowd controlled major mum is still with us, maybe, yeah. and she can just let us know. But I guess, could you maybe just give us a bit of a sort of general overview then, maybe about things people can do if they can prevent gestation? Oh, baby gets very big, she says. Y yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean... It's, it's a difficult one and gestational diabetes is something that you know if if you've got for instance if you've got diabetes in your family which you may or may not do or if you've had a history of it it can recur quite easily because once your body's slipped into that state during pregnancy once it gets pregnant again it can be like oh okay here we go again let's do this um and it, you know it can be quite tricky but so really uh, thinking of the, the in terms of gestational diabetes it's all about the blood sugars and so depending on how severe like if you've got a tendency towards it and as you say baby's weight always starts to spiral towards the end then really from the start of your pregnancy or even from preconception it's around keeping those blood sugars in a really 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 tight check and what that looks like is 
um, if possible, avoiding simple sugars at, at all. Um, so that would be your cakes and biscuits and, and anything that contains refined sugar. Um, if you are eating those things, obviously, you know, we, we need to treat ourselves sometimes. But if you are eating those things, best to eat them off the back of a main meal. So have maybe some dessert after a main meal. And then your blood sugars aren't going to spiral so much as opposed to maybe having a cup of tea and a biscuit in the middle of the, the afternoon, which can send the blood sugars um, skyrocket, skyrocketing. And just really keeping a, an eye and like measuring regularly your blood sugars and getting to know your own body and getting to know what your own triggers are um, and keeping things in check but again like even just something simple like a switch from uh, from white carbs to um, to whole grains can really help make a difference but it's about preempting trying to preempt rather than kind of um, you know rather than it, it, it spiraling because once it has gone out of control then it's really easy for it to go out of control again because your body is thinking okay we've done this before this is what we need to do and it's going to trigger that insulin release yeah okay cool thanks for answering that and thanks for writing um for your um question um i've got another one here from amazed um she i think this is off the back of our conversation a moment ago about eating regularly in pregnancy she says how about calcium i'm struggling to get yogurt down but i'm now 29 weeks pregnant and i worry a little bit about that so any um advice for that Yes. So calcium is an interesting one because I think we all think we when, when we say calcium, we automatically think about dairy and we all think, oh, you know, I must get my dairy down me to get all my calcium needs. But actually calcium is found in quite a lot of other things, um, not just dairy. So, you know, if, for example, uh, you know, if, a, if, if there's plenty of women who are vegan, for example, who get pregnant and, and sustain healthy pregnancies and they don't eat any dairy at all. So it's just about me being mindful about other sources of calcium and again uh, one of the best sources of calcium same with iron is is dark green leafy uh, veg mm -hmm. so thinking about your spinach kale broccoli all of those things um are high in calcium and also nuts and seeds um are a really nice source of calcium so if you've got a diet that's kind of high in plant foods then you will be getting your calcium intake without having to force yogurt down yourself when you don't uh, feel like it Perfect. Cool. Okie dokie. Hopefully that answered your question for you, Mamazed, as well. So if I revert back to some of the questions that we got sent in prior to the call. So um, do I need to take supplements like multivitamins during pregnancy? Yes. So this um, this question is a slightly tricky one for me to na navigate because, <laughs> because my practice, basically, it doesn't allow me to uh, give supplement advice yes. um, generically, really. So uh I, I normally my supplement advice is tailored to the individual however in pregnancy you know i think um it's it's safe to say that a multivitamin in pregnancy is is a good idea as long as it's a uh one that's designed for pregnancy uh, so you know it's and again it's just i suppose doing your research and thinking because not all vitamins and supplements are made the same and quality really really varies and a lot of the time particularly with some of um the b vitamins for example uh, if the quality is not great you'll just pee it straight out and you what your body won't actually utilize or absorb it at all right. um so it's worth just doing a little bit of research around kind of thinking about the quality of the of the multivitamins and um, and then again the uh, the actual doses of each vitamin range so much between different multivitamins um so again it's not something that i can advise on in a generic way uh, but you know just do a little bit of research and you know i think as long as you're going for a, um, a multivitamin that's designed for pregnancy and yeah. then perhaps thinking about a better quality one then it is it is worth um worthwhile and the other um possible supplement that you might want to take in pregnancy as a generic is um omega-3 uh, fatty acids or fish oils basically and you can get if you are vegetarian or vegan and want to avoid the fish oils you can get vegetarian sources of omega-3 as well perfect cool okay thanks for that um so is it true that i need to drink more water when i'm breastfeeding hop into postnatal <laughs> yeah so going, going into the postnatal mode so um uh, it's that's 
a difficult one, isn't it? Because we always get this image of, oh, you know, you sit with your kind of water station and that's going to help with your breast milk supply. And <laughs> um, it doesn't quite work like that. So drinking water isn't going to increase your breast milk supply. However, if you are breastfeeding, then you're at risk of becoming dehydrated. So you want to be increasing your water supply for you. So yeah. it's, the answer basically is it's not going to impact your breast milk. So if you're not drinking enough water, you don't need to panic that your breast milk is going to suddenly dry out. But you do need to worry about your own health and well-being because water is just essential uh, for, you, for your own kind of energy and your own feeling good. So, um, yeah, I would recommend drinking lots of water, but not to panic if you don't. Oh, okie dokie. Um, let's have a look. What else have we got here? Do you, do I still need to avoid the list of foods that you can't eat in pregnancy? So I guess like your cheeses and all of that sort of stuff whilst breastfeeding. Yeah, I liked this question, actually. It was an interesting one. So, um, yeah, I, um, I, in, in a nutshell, no, you don't. It, it, those things that you needed to avoid in pregnancy uh, are largely because of um, the bacteria risk. So, like, your blue cheeses, for example, contain yeah. certain types of bacteria. or So it's risk of infection, basically. It's risk of that there could be some bacteria that you consume in your bloodstream that then crosses the placenta barrier and, and impacts baby. So it's very, you know, it is quite overcautious because the risk is very low of eating those things in pregnancy, but it is still a risk. Risk. but as soon as you've had baby you don't need to worry about foods crossing the placenta barrier anymore um so no it is generally fine to eat all of those foods i would say the only foods that you need to be mindful of um after you've had a baby are um and again you know it, it doesn't mean that you can't have these things but just think being mindful of perhaps your caffeine intake if you're breastfeeding um and your alcohol intake if you're breastfeeding um that those topics are kind of topics for a whole conversation in their own right but um <laughs> Um, but just to be mindful of those and also just to be mindful if you've got a baby who's particularly kind of colicky or perhaps refluxy then it's it you know it might be thinking about possible allergens in your diet that are transferring into the breast milk as well and uh, yeah. most mo one of the most common ones is is cow's milk protein so but again you know I wouldn't go rushing to kind of cut out any kind of big foods from your diet right away without consulting someone first yeah Okay, cool. Thank you for that. Um, so let's have a look here. Um, we've talked about gestational diabetes. Um, are there any foods that can improve sleep quality for both mum and baby? For us, <laughs> sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, sadly, there's no magic bullet when, um, when it comes to sleep. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um you know i think that you know sleep is one of those things that can can just be so difficult especially kind of in the in the first year of life and you know it's especially if you're coming into motherhood for the first time because it's such a huge um adjustment um but i suppose yeah just just um it's not nutrition related but um just thinking about your your kind of your sleep hygiene so your your melatonin production so you know not having too bright lights on in the evening just kind of winding down a little bit in the evening maybe cutting the screen time an hour before bedtime can help to improve your melatonin but of course usually it's not you that's got the issue with sleeping unless it's during pregnancy it's it's baby uh you know it's, it's you having to wake up for baby um yeah. But I think, again, just being mindful of, well, A, the fact that it's normal for a baby to be waking in the night, yeah. um, but B, um, uh, just thinking, uh, you know, are, are there any triggers going on here that are causing my baby to be maybe uncomfortable? Like, again, thinking back to any possible allergens um, and any kind of, you know, if they're colicky, et cetera, what could be behind that? Um, so, you know, just to try and address those things so that they're not waking from discomfort and that they're just kind of waking, you know, for a regular feed or a cuddle um, as babies normally would. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Okay. Um, I've got one here. I'm so sick in the mornings. I can't keep food down. Should I still be trying to eat? Oh, poor, poor person. I know. Yeah, I can really, really um, empathise with that because I had hyperemesis in both of my pregnancies oh, in the God. first trimester and it is just awful. So I feel your pain. I really do. Um, in my personal experience um, of high premises it, or, or just sickness in pregnancy in general, it's um, 
it's just a matter of trying to get through it through whatever means you can like some people say that oh taking like methylated b6 can help some people say that taking ginger can help etc i i didn't find that anything helped me personally uh, i tried kind of every trick in the book so i think yes it's what you want to do to avoid becoming dehydrated is trying to to keep uh, fluid down you again i couldn't tolerate water and lots of mums find that they can't tolerate water in um, in in pregnancy when they're feeling sick so you know even if you need to put some like you know diluted juice or something to keep your fluids um to keep your fluid intake uh, at relatively stable to stop you yeah. getting de dehydrated then that's great but you know if you if you can't eat don't don't force yourself to eat you know that people do say or oh, try not to have an empty stomach but the reality is sometimes it's just too difficult to force something down so yeah. you know if you can for uh, not for sorry if you can get down small amounts of like dry you know like the boring foods like dry crackers <laughs> yeah. and these kind of things then great that can help to line the stomach but if you just can't then just do whatever you can to get through the day and be kind and gentle to yourself absolutely absolutely um and i've got another one here what's the best way to bring on labor i'm guessing <laughs> there's any sorts of magical food you know we hear about pineapple curry and all of those sorts of things um any advice on that front <laughs> yeah i mean again there's, there's no magic bullet when it comes to bringing on labor like it, i'd be a rich woman if i knew how to, uh, to bring on labor yeah i mean people do try um the 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 thoughts behind curry like spicy foods for example is that spicy foods can you know without being too graphic but you know the night the day after having a curry you often need to um use the toilet shall we say and so what happens with those spicy foods is it can get your um your digestion uh, kind of triggering uh, and with that it can like possibly stimulate uterine contractions so it's a bit of a tenuous link okay. um, but you know it's worth a try um yeah. uh, pineapple um again a bit of an old wives tale um but you know you, it, it's worth a try but i think most importantly i wanted to say to this poor person who's overdue who by this point may may not be overdue you never know yeah. <laughs> oh. um is is that the and again it's not nutrition related but the 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 whole due date thing is something that we can become quite fixated on and actually it's a bit of a myth because i think it's only seven percent of babies are born on their due date so i prefer the i think in france they use a due I'm not sure if we've lost Katie. Let's see if she pops back. But, um, you know, I think that was a really important point that she was making about, you know, becoming fixated on due dates and things and that actually it's just really a rough guide. Um, hopefully she'll be popping back in in a moment. Let me see if I can add her back in. Let's give another try. Just bear with me a second. Let's find her again. Let's see if we can get her back. <laughs> Technology, hey? Do, do, do. Let's see. I mean, Casey's been making some really great points already, um, you know, about things. Um, we've talked about gestational diabetes. Um, we've also talked about um, what you should be eating in pregnancy, anything regularly, about multivitamins and things. Um, let's just see. We're just trying to see if we can get her back in. Goodness, let's give it another try let's see there we go hello <laughs> sorry i don't know what happened there no, that's okay no worries i just sent a little thing in the in the, in the comments I I here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no that's fine it's just te not typical technology isn't it that's it exactly Lost our life. <laughs> <laughs> so we were just talking, weren't we, about being overdue, and you were saying about due dates and um, in France about the way that they measure them. 
Yeah, so in France, they tend to do due months rather than a due date. And I think that's really great because it just takes the pressure off a little bit. And it's, you know, because I think invariably, if you're given a date and it's like, yes, your baby's going to arrive on this day, even if we know that the chances are low of that happening, we still put pressure on ourselves to, you know, to not go past that. And I know it's uncomfortable and, you know, it's, it's you just want to get that baby out. But, you know, just I think the best piece of advice and, and my my daughter Rose who's seven months now she was nearly two weeks late so again I can really empathize <laughs> with you but um you know my I just said to myself I had a little um affirmation that I said to myself multiple di- times a day which was my baby will come when my baby is ready and I just had to yeah. say that to myself all the time just to think you know it's okay so yeah good luck <laughs> yes oh well we wish you luck um who the follower who wrote in with that question um and i think let's just do one more final question if that's all right with you katie yeah, um, yeah. So, um what can i eat to improve energy levels um yes so you're pregnant yeah and- postnatal when you're exhausted yeah exactly exactly so it is it is a big uh, a big one generally and we've kind of touched on it um with some of the things that we've spoken about already so um you know again thinking about the fact that um so thinking about things that um give you energy or can uh, you know stump energy a bit now um iron is one of those things in pregnancy um iron levels can naturally dip a little bit in in particularly third trimester um so just thinking about kind of how to boost that that iron i'm not saying go out and get a load of um iron supplements because you know that's not necessarily the answer you can boost iron naturally quite well um, and with thinking about red meats again and dark green leafy veg and whole grains um or gentle um like food source iron um uh like you know like your spartone in these kinds of things uh can gently boost iron so that's one to think about um water intake is so often overlooked like it's not you know it's not an interesting thing everyone's just like yeah yeah i know i should be drinking more water but i don't think that people really realize how important water is and 70 percent of our bodies like our cells everything is made from water and it's just critical um, and you know in pregnancy our uh, blood flow our, our blood volume increases by a third so you know that your blood is fluid right so you know we we need more fluid um, yeah. than we ever did and um and same for for postnatally particularly if you're breastfeeding as, as i mentioned earlier so water is really important and again going i sound like a bit of a broken record here but again you know when we're talking about uh, gestational diabetes thinking about those whole grains and those slow release um uh, energy foods to kind of keep you sustained throughout the day yeah. um but also just try not to let your your blood sugars dip too much so you know try not to go too many hours without eating as well so you know even if it's maybe having like some oat cakes and hummus or you know some apple and peanut butter or something as like a little mid-morning or mid or late afternoon snack um is a really great idea just to keep you keep those energy levels sustained throughout the day perfect cool well, oh and sorry i was going to mention oh, yeah. as well the uh, the blog that i uh, that i wrote for you guys yes. um last week so you i don't know do you want to maybe put a link to that in yes, me? I will yeah i'll pop in a link to that in the comments and things and this will be available for um replays um for people to watch so do let us know if you're watching this on a replay katie it's been absolutely fantastic to hear from you this morning and i know that i've certainly learned a few things that i didn't <laughs> know that i wish i did know during pregnancy um and, and things where can people find out more information about you um and what you have what you offer yeah so my uh, my instagram handle on here you can probably see but it's um it's katie bradbury health um all one word and it's katie with a y um so i'm on here and on facebook as well um and if my website is just katiebradbury.com um so yeah do come and check me out i'm i love having chats with people so i'm always happy to ask questions answer questions and and just kind of get involved so so i'm yeah i look forward to connecting with some of you perfect and i guess that it's okay if anybody's got any questions sort of following on from our chat today if they pop them in the comments and tag you in you'll just yeah. have a little look onto them is that all right yeah, absolutely yeah perfect. yeah that's fine i'm happy to answer anyone's questions awesome all well, right everybody 
Katie. It's been fab. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today and sending in your questions. We'll be back next month with another expert Q&A. So join us then. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.